Oh, question yeah. for you. Yes. Can you please help me to understand the concept of the Great Spirit never having had a beginning? The finite yeah. mind has difficulty with something, to understand something never having a beginning. True. The finite mind could never understand the infinite because the finite mind being a manifestation of the infinitude or of eternity could never maintain its eternal value. Being a ma manifestation is a reflection. Now the question is how valid is your finite mind? Has it any permanency at all? It has not because it is forever changing. Now that which is forever changing, how could it grasp that which is never changing? But without trying to understand, one can experience infinity through our meditations and spiritual practices. So the experience is not of the mind, but the experience is of your heart. And by heart we mean the core of your personality. And when one reaches the core and experiences that through our spiritual practices, we experience infinity. Now when I say we, it is not the mind experiencing it. It is not the ego self experiencing it because they are all limitations, manifestations of reality. Good. So where does the experience come from? Infinity experiences itself. And therefore, it is beyond verbalization or beyond thought processes. So, how do we achieve this? Firstly, as you start your practices and are regular with the practices, you will discover a certain truth. And then after a while, you will say, not this, not this. And which is a very good thing, because by saying not this, you will progress further into that inquiry, which we call Gnana Yoga. And as we progress into the inquiry, we reach a point from where we cannot go further beyond. Hmm? I said in some lectures somewhere that the human brain contains 12 billion cells and we are only using one a millionth of the 12 billion cells. Hmm? So the mind is not using its full capacity at all. The cells are dormant. And even Einstein, he only used about 7, 8% of his brain. Hmm? So in that 7, 8% of the use of the brain, how can you understand? And 8% of 12 billion cells. So all the cells are dormant. Now through spiritual practices, we awaken the cells more and more. And by awakening the brain cells more and more, the greater the mind filters through. Because the brain is not the mind. The mind is universal. There is only one mind. And the only reason why the mind is individualized is because we have not given full scope to its potentiality. But this is possible where the mind, by getting it out of sleep to its fullest capacity, you can appreciate the entire universe. You just know. Hmm? And in that knowingness, you start 
the experiential process. Now, there are many ways of doing this through extreme devotion, through analysis, through action. And of course, as you would know, that action really strengthens the thought and then those thoughts get planted deeper and deeper into the subconscious level of the mind and from there it is transmitted back to the conscious level and that's how you act. So those actions control the limitations of your mind. A certain person with a greater awareness, his actions would be far different from the actions of those that has a more aware mind. So, spiritual practices brings us awareness. It brings us an understanding that is very true according to its limitations. But that is not what we want. Hmm? We do not want understanding only, although it is necessary, but we want the peace that passes all understanding, and that is infinity. That peace is infinite, beginless, and because it is beginless, it will never end. So it is a continual or a continuation of a process that goes on and on and on. And as you know, universes are created and at this very moment there are so many galaxies and stars that are a million times, a billion times larger than our small planet Earth exploding at this very moment. Hmm? explode but to reform its atomic structures back again into another universe and there growth begins and evolution begins because of the force hmm, of that explosion. But now how much does it help a man just to find understanding? when understanding has its own particular limitations. For example, uh, I've been told this by thousands of people that, Guruji, um, I have a tape that you did in a satsang three years ago, and when I listen to it again today, I find totally different meanings in it find totally different meanings in it because their awareness has developed. You know, there was this boy of 14 uh, and he says, my father is so stupid, he knows nothing. But when the boy turned 25, he says, oh, my father knows a lot. Hmm? The father has the same knowledge. But the boy's awareness because of his growth from 14 to 25 developed a greater understanding and a greater awareness. So, to repeat again, understanding has its own value. Understanding can make us more kind, more loving, more compassionate, hmm? more sympathetic. But to know the value of infinity and what is infinity after all? Infinity is divinity. Hmm? For divinity and infinity is the same in its own eternity. Hmm? So when this manifestation comes around, uh, the manifestation is also infinite. Because as soon as infinity started, it starts emanating, for it's the nature of everything to emanate all the time, like these flowers emanating fragrance. And everything is vibrations, 
and the manifestation is just a reflection of the manifester. Now, if we should go deeper into these details, we will find that a reflection is an illusion. So does your mind really exist? That is the question. You are only relying on the sensory input into the lower level of the mind. And your whole life is guided by it. Uh, our five senses, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling, hmm? all that. Right. Now, to find the reality, to make the manifestation merge again into the manifesta, then the experience is there of the manifesta himself by himself. So in other words, you become a divine. And it can be achieved in this lifetime, or else it can take millions of lifetimes. I do not know where Hindu theology, especially the Puranas, those are some scriptures of the Hindus, uh, they maintain that it took 8,400,000 lifetimes to reach the stage of man. Because in everything we see around us, man has the highest consciousness. But his consciousness is influenced by various factors, by his environment, by the impressions that he has in his mind, in the subconscious level of the mind, and these bring about limitations. Hmm? People sitting here might look at these beautiful flowers, but everyone will see differently according to their own personal experiences. Now the realized man will see the flower in its totality. The unrealized man will only see the surface of the flower, this lovely pink and the green, only it's the surface. But the realized man who has become one with infinity will see the entire molecular structure, the invisible sap that makes this flower. He realizes then that Look how beautiful even manifestation is that it gave these flowers the right amount of sunshine, the right amount of rain, the right amount of mineral combinations in the ground to make it grow. See? So all this comes all at once to the man of that awareness or of realization. So it means that he looks further than the surface value of things. What are we doing at the moment? And as you would know that even the highest philosophy or metaphysics, I'd like to bring it down to its practical level. Hmm? Aren't we all looking at things only on the surface value? A person says a nasty word to you or does something which you don't like and you stop liking that person. Why do you stop liking that person? Because you have not got that deeper understanding yet to understand his motivation hmm? or his entire mental psychological structure to be able to interpret it in a right way. That look, this poor fellow, he got very angry, but there must have happened something to him. Therefore, he's very angry. So let me not look at the anger. We look at the anger only, and we react. But if we do not look at the anger 
and peer deep with every person, we will see the causes of his anger and we will feel sorry for him and sympathetic towards him. Hmm? And just disregard the anger. For anger is a weakness and are we all devoid of any weaknesses? Hmm? And perhaps his anger is felt more by you because there's anger in your own nature. So his anger, really speaking, is a reflection of our own inner self, of the angry self within us, which is just externalized or objectified. Now, to repeat again, spiritual practices removes these qualities from us, uh, which are not beneficial to us. Hmm? Every day you go along, and I know because I have a lot of consultations with people, individual consultations, and I find that um, they live in turmoil and turbulence all the time, and never in that quietude, uh, or never even in solitude. I've seen people's homes where you'll find the whole day is the TV is on or the radio is on, you know, and they're bombarding themselves. And when they go outside, all the noises of the cars and the traffic and what have you. So the mind is just being bombarded all the time. And because of it being bombarded all the time, it has not been given the opportunity to go into introspection of oneself and to ask, why am I doing this? Hmm? Now, without the understanding of the little mind, you will keep on doing it. Hmm? But the mind can also tell you that let me have the quieted, 15, 20 minutes a day and regenerate myself. Hmm? And that is the meaning of the Bible. Be still and know that I am God. See? So, we need that stillness. But we do reach a stage, as the Gita would say, to find action in inaction, non-action and to find non-action in action. That's the secret of life. So life becomes totally effortless. For effort can only achieve few things. But you need the effort, but the effort can definitely become effortless if you are established within yourself. And that comes about by meditation, spiritual practices, and Guru Shakti. Hmm? Yes. So, measure when we say infinity is infinite, beginless and endless, fine, um, and the mind, of course, is finite. So the mind measures things in space and time. Hmm? <coughs> I flew 20 odd thousand miles here now, more I think, because I had to go to England first and from there to Chicago. <coughs> <coughs> and then to Vancouver and then from there to here. Hmm? So I say I've covered 22,000 miles, and I'm measuring it with time, saying that it took me about 40-odd hours or more of traveling. People measure things in time and space, and that is what the mind does. Hmm? You know, um, there was this grandfather 
fly. And he took a walk with a grandson on someone's bald head. And this chap was, uh, you know, was totally bald, more so than Mike, of course. <laughs> Good. He was totally bald. And um, so the grand grandfather explains, um, you know, to the little grandson, of course, explains that, do you know that where we are walking now, there was once a footpath? <laughs> you see how time plays tricks on us. Hmm? Why did the fly, the grandfather fly, not realize that the man's head has expanded? <laughs> So his memory goes back to the footpath he used to walk on and not the total baldness of the head. Hmm? Now, what the fly is doing, and I say time flies, hmm? but time goes backward as well. So what this fly is doing is going backward in his memory of the baldy's younger days and his younger days. And that too is a limitation. For we live in memories and we project those memories of the past into the future. And so therefore, living in that state, one's progress also becomes limited. Not to say that we must not learn from our experiences learn from our past experiences, but don't live in your past experiences. That's the secret. And that helps you to give the mind greater and greater expansion, greater awareness. Blessed is he who, who can become so aware that he regards the entire world, nay, the entire universe as himself. And when he truly experiences this unity, then his manifested mind merges into the manifest. Hmm? Everything has to express itself. Hmm? So the flower is expressing itself in fragrance. This bulb is expressing itself in light. So even God or the manifester has to express itself by its manifestation. Hmm? Or else, what is the purpose of God? Why should he exist? Hmm? Although it is eternal existing, if it cannot express itself, and we are the expressions of the expressionless. But the expression can merge into the expression expressionless. And then you could say, I and my father are one. Hmm? You become as vast as your father. And then you don't think in the terms of time. You don't think in the terms of space. Because the mind is so expanded then that it just can do nothing else but merge away into the beginless and endless divine. So that is the secret of life. And one should not be discouraged at all for his limitations. Hmm? For everyone who will reach the divine, everyone will say, I and my father are one. Hmm? Now, why do they use those words, I and my father are one? Hmm? Well, they will use the word father because the I that's mentioned is the son. And naturally, the son is the product of the father. Hmm? That is why. That expression is used, is used in a poetic manner. But of course, this is very much in, misinterpreted by many theologies, thinking, 
of a father figure mm, sitting up there in heaven somewhere on a throne. Mm? And a father's always expected to be kind, protective, and looking after you. But that is absolute nonsense. He's not looking after you at all. That father that we speak of is just but a neutral energy hmm, that is permeating every cell of your body. And it is the limited mind that creates the bondage. Hmm? So what one has to do is to merge the limited mind into that infinite energy. Hmm? So in other words, you proceed from bondage to freedom for that energy is freedom itself because it is boundless. Hmm? And the word boundless should mean that it has no boundaries, boundlessness. Hmm? And it is only then when one has that emergence that man can find his own totality. If man can just become an observer, he has to live in this world, he has to act in this world, he has to do the things that have to be done in this world. But if he could do it as every action or every happening or everything in the environment, if he can act as an observer, he observes all the happenings. Hmm? For example, look, I am subjected to pain too, but I observe the pain and the pain disappears. I do not get involved in the pain and say that I'm paining, I'm paining, I'm paining, and it will pain more. But as soon as you can stand apart, you still have to live this life. But if the mental processes can stand apart, then everything becomes beautiful. Mm. Then you can say, love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm. Because everything is beautiful. Even the vilest person on earth, a thief, a murderer, a rapist, is not to be hated. No. His mind, you gain the understanding that his mind has been perverted due through his own karmas or sanskaras, his actions, hmm? and he can't help it. Hmm? He has become habituated to certain kinds of actions, so he will too one day rise above his habituations and his patterns, rather. Hmm? He too will rise above that. So then you do not look down upon him. You two will say, look, he is a, a manifestation, as I am. Hmm? And anything that comes from the manifesta, which is total purity, hmm? then the manifestation is also pure. Hmm? All the conflicting things we see around us is the process of the relativity, of the relative side of life. And this process has to be there. These conflicts have to be there. This contraction and expansion has to be there in order to find harmony. Hmm? Or else, without the opposites, how are you going to realize the middle, which is harmony? So it is the opposites that bring itself together in this process of the universe that makes man realize his self, which you can call God-realization, hmm? realizes himself and he finds harmony with everything. Therefore, great sages, hmm? 
great spiritual masters have no hatred in their hearts. For they feel themselves one with everything. They have unity consciousness, which is pure consciousness. Hmm? And therefore, Jesus said, if they slap you on one cheek, off the other. For the person that has smacked me is none else but me, and I have smacked myself. Yes, and I'm not going to do anything wrong to myself. Perhaps I needed being spanked. Hmm? And who in this world doesn't need spanking? I do a lot of spanking, hmm? verbally, of course, you know, to teach. Yes. So, your mind you can never control because it is finite. Hmm? You're just, by trying control, you're just creating greater and greater inhibitions and repressions in the mind. And by dwelling in the process of controlling something, by dwelling on it, it becomes more and more stronger in your subconscious mind. But in your actions, which whatever they are, you can become the observer and the actions or words or whatever loses its strength. Hmm? And that is the way to put, to put a nutshell answer to the question that how can the endless infinite be realized by the mind? It cannot. The mind can be brought to a stage of appreciation, but not to a realization. But appreciation is a step. And when the mind, in its fullest awareness, realizes the unity that exists in the universe between himself and the universe, then it takes a jump into the unknown. And that unknown is the energy, which is the manifesto. Hmm? So you came from the unknown and you go back into the unknown, but the un unknown experiences itself in its expression. Hmm? Like a drop of water being dropped into the ocean. Hmm? The drop of water is not lost, but its ego self has been lost. But look at the great benefit. It has become one with the ocean, for is the ocean not composed of all drops put together in unity? And then you proceed from the suffering of the little self to the great bliss, the ecstasy, the indescribable joy of the ocean or that infinity, which is beginless and endless and forever there. It was, is, and forever will be. Thank you. We will leave some for tomorrow. Let's see if we can't find a piece of paper. Hmm. Always carry these little pieces of paper around with me. You know, two friends went to the museum and saw a painting of Christ there. So this one friend says, um, they must be Jewish. So friend asks, how can you say that? They must be Jewish. What do you mean by that? He says, look, what an anomaly. Uh, Jesus was born poor. 
hmm, in a barn with animals around him, and yet the Jews could afford to get a Rembrandt to paint a picture of that scene. Hmm. And yet they crucified him. Hmm. Now, Issy Goldberg was another Jewish chap. I hope there are no Jews here. It's all in good humor. Hmm. Um, Issy Goldberg died. And of course, his will was read. And of course, as you know, all wills always start off with in sober and sound mind, right? So it starts, in sober and sound mind, I spent every penny before I died. <laughs> you know, there was an old lion and um, this old lion had a problem. And the problem was this, that he had a very thick mane and the birds made a nest in it. And you know, the birds were twittering every night and the poor old lion just couldn't sleep. Hmm? So he went to a psychologist, then he went to a psychiatrist, and then um, the physician, hmm? and nothing could help him. The physician said, look, uh, what you could do is um, shave off the mane so the birds can't make a nest there. So the lion said, look, let me try that. And uh, he shaved off his mane and the birds were gone. But the lion felt terrible because it had psychological effects upon him. It made the lion feel very effeminate because what is a lion without a mane? But thanks to God that the mane grew again. And there the birds started flocking again and built a nest and they were twittering all night and um, the, the lion couldn't sleep. So he decided, look, I've tried the physician and the psychiatrist and psychologist and what have you. Uh, let me go to a witch doctor. Now, which doctor he went to, I don't know. So he goes to this witch doctor, and so the witch doctor speaks to him, and he says, look, this is uh, not much of a problem. What you do is this, that you go to the supermarket and buy some yeast. You know what yeast is, which they put in dough to make bread rise? Hmm? Yeast. So buy some yeast and rub it on your vest. The vest we wear underneath, rub it on your vest. So the lion tried that. And all you know, in a day or so, all the birds were gone. And the lion could sleep very peacefully. So he goes back to this witch doctor after a week. And he says, sir, you've done me a great service because I was being driven crazy by the twittering. Yeah. And how much do I owe you? So um, the doctor, the witch doctor says, no, it's on the house. You know, we won't charge you anything. Yeah. But remember one thing, says the witch doctor, that yeast is yeast and vest is vest and never the main shall tweet. <laughs> Dear me. Well, thank you very much. It's so nice being with you today. Oh, that was more than an hour. Good. Tomorrow we'll really start working hard.